Yeah, that's what's happening to me right now. That is our story. Mm -hmm. Keeping our parents in their place. Yep. No, Mom, I don't want you to come to the doctor with me. I need alone time. No, sister, I am going to call you when I am ready. No, I will make the decision. I had to put a lot of people in adult this week because I had to be an adult and do something for me. And that's hard because that's called boundaries. That's called making people uncomfortable. That's called telling the truth. That's why it's becoming your authentic self because you stop people pleasing and you stop meeting anybody else's needs. And I said yesterday in the lecture, that I was talking to a client of mine who is living with a few roommates in New York. And she hyper cleans the apartment. You know, apartments in New York are this tight. And there's like four or five girls in there. And she was like, I clean everything. And then one of the other girls, when I finally left my own bowl, because she went off to do something, was like, how can you leave that there? She was I clean everything. I'm the one that cleans. I said, and that's where you're wrong. I said, you should only do your piece. What is your part? What is your little section? You can't do everyone's section and then want to go back to just doing your section. No one's going to let you. And it's very hard for us to put boundaries. But in order for us to heal, in order for us to have adult relationships with our parents, and when we segue into relationships, is to have a transaction of an adult, an adult, an adult. But the reason that every single person, place, thing, or situation is dysfunctional as a mother or a father is because you're either doing this or you're doing this. So when you have a client, you can draw the triangle and listen and put the child somewhere at the bottom because the child's always going to have the alliance. This is an alliance. And then when the person talks, put down here was the alliance mother or father. And then the other parent has to be up here. And the likelihood is that their issue is related to the story around that parent. And do not jump the gun thinking that because the parent was dead or because the parent was not around that they're not in the alliance. Do not do that. Listen to the client and ask the questions. So why did Rebecca create an alliance with her mother and herself? Who was the mother in Rebecca's story? No, she's the child. Who was the mother? The mom. Who? Her mom. No, she didn't mention her mom. Oh, her mom. What was her story? What's the synopsis of what her problem was? Her dad was always... No, 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 no. What is the presenting problem? When I sat, I'm like, what do you want to tell me? Her friend. Um, she had a boyfriend, yeah. and she had a friend who was hitting on her. Yeah. Those are your players. She's the child. How did we know where to locate the boyfriend, John and, and whatever the other guy's name? <laughs> how did we... Oh, Juan. How did we know to put John somewhere and Juan somewhere? What made me know who was who? The boyfriend was the mom. mom. The yeah. boyfriend was the mom. The, was the, the alliance was with the boyfriend. Okay? So Rebecca and Jose. So who was in the dad? The, the John. John. So now you've taken the triad and you've put the people in the system. And now you know the whole story. You know the whole story. So let's do another one. Anyone here have a friend or someone or, or themselves who has alcohol or drug issues or thing or ever been in a relationship that broke up because of, of alcohol or drugs? I have a friend that's an alcoholic. Okay. A hot mess. Okay, so well, does he know? Just because he functions as an shit. No, no, I'm just he saying. He functions until he kills But does he know? Yeah. Well, in a way, yes, he does know, but he's he like, doesn't want to talk about it. Okay, is he in a relationship? Uh, with his business, yeah. Okay, perfect. That's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so he is in an alliance with these X, and here's his business. And then here's me. Well, not you. Let's no. let's use a husband and wife for a moment. I'll get to back to that one because that one's actually a good one. Husband and wife, Aniella, right? Didn't she say her father was an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mother and child and father. We know that the alliance with Aniella and herself, right? And the father is the alcoholic. So now we're going into a new system. It's one of the reasons why I want to show you that diagram. So now we have another triangle that shows up. So here's mother, father, father. Now, who is the father married to? The alcohol. Yeah. The alcohol. And then here goes mom. This should have been mom. So, Aniela is an alliance with the mom, and the father is the problem. The father has a marriage with the mom, but his alliance is with the alcohol. So in every single relationship, and your friend is in a relationship with his business, but really the alliance is with the alcohol. So his business has to suffer as a result. It has to. Yeah, yeah, this is why I call my podcast the mistress of the subconscious. This is the mistress. It's what does it fit in the system that you give attention to. So in James's friend's case, Javier is in alliance with the alcohol instead of his business. He should be, this is what he wants to say, but the alcohol becomes the mistress. So if we can position it when we're listening to people to hear who is with their alliance, we can start understanding that where they're giving their energy to is taking away from the system. And this is a major problem in relationships. Whether it is a real mistress, male or female. How do you say mistress as a man? There is no. Otra. <laughs> no, no, if it's there a man, if the woman oh. is cheating with a man. Okay. There is no, because women are the ones who get of you know, that comes blamed. From that comes all from mythology. That's the whole story of Lilith. Women, so get, charged. women get the so negative charge. So names for women, bad names so for women. And yes. <laughs> right, because the belief, according to mythology, oh, and shush. the bullshit that, the bullshit that the Christian, Christianity sold us all, is that in mythology, one example is Pandora. Pandora was sent with the box full of all of the plagues. And they said, don't open it. And what do you do when you tell a woman not to do something? She's going to do it. So she opened it, and all of the plagues came out. Adam and Eve. Poor little Adam. Oh, my God. She forced them to eat the apple. In... In Hebrew mythology, Lilith, Lilith was like evil. And if you looked at her, you would like fall in love with her in a trance. And, but she was evil because she was so beautiful. So the, the, the apple, anyone ever slice an apple open? Oh, I ate an apple today. It was so disgusting. I think I was poisoned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you smack open an apple, what do you think is in the middle of the apple? Core. Uh, See, do you know what symbol it makes? It's like, isn't it like a heart? Yeah. It's, it's not a heart. It's, it's like, like, like a, a teardrop. Like, like a what? Are you saying? Are you trying to say triangle? No. No, I don't think it's a triangle there. It's a hexagram. Oh, yeah. And the hexagram is the symbol for Wicca and Pagan, which is the witch. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the symbolism the why in Snow, Snow White, White. Yeah. the apple is poison. And you see the worm coming through an apple, which is symbolic of the snake of the Garden of Eden. And he couldn't get the apple off the tree, but she gave it to him anyway. Because when you slice it open, the seeds are five. Pentagram, I meant, sorry. And that's a symbol in those wicked traditions. And witch, the word witch, all it means is wise woman. And in every mythology across the board, when we do your astrology chart, that'll be the first thing I teach you, is your, is your witch, is your black moon, or your wise woman. Because that's the part of you that you suppress. Because in our collective unconscious, we were told that that's the prostitute, that that part of us is bad. And if you know that about yourself, what, where it is in your chart, you will see that that is where you are ashamed, where you carry shame, where you beat yourself up. It is like an instant information about where you do not permit yourself to be fully open in that part of your life. It keeps you totally inauthentic. And it's linked to shame. Because the story of Eve or Pandora or Lilith or all of the women of history is one around shame. Where prior to Christianity, it was that the woman was wise, that the woman led the land, the woman was the matriarch. Judaism is the only religion that still keeps the name for the child from the Jewish tradition. And if you're born Jewish from a Jewish mother, you are considered Jewish. It's the only matriar matriarchal or matrilineal tradition left. So when Christianity came, they said, oh no, no. Mary Magdalene, <laughs> we're not allowing wise women. So they called her a slut that had seven demons in her. And so, like Paula's mother, many of us have an imagery that if you're a wise woman or a witch or whatever, that you're a prostitute. And the Bible did a very, very good storyline with the virgin. And it really fucked up women. Now, which was funny because I was listening to public radio yesterday and someone said, oh, it's the year of the woman. And the one who was being interviewed said, oh, we only get one year. <laughs> and I was like, what a great response. What a great response. The year of the woman and the, the, the time of the goddess. And if you see on Facebook, if you follow any of those things, everyone's doing full moon circles and God is this and God is that and God is power and all of that. Is because the woman, not as a human, but the feminine energy is coming back. Mother Earth is female. Okay? So when men ruled at the point of Christianity, we would have been in fight. We have been at war. When women were ruling, there was a thousand years of peace. A thousand years. Can you imagine that? How many wars have been between 1918 and 2018? A gazillion. Yes. Imagine a thousand years of peace because women deal differently. The technique is different. So Christianity took that and to disempower women as rulers, not only made men the rulers, but they labeled us whores and prostitutes and witches and need to be burned at the stake. And if you read the crucible, that's part of that time. Yes. Where does that come into play as far as uh, terrorism and codes and all that stuff? Like there was women in power everywhere. And now you're saying that there's going to be peace, but these women, like, if, like for instance, Hillary Clinton were to office. My main concern was that she, she don't pull the trigger like when it needs to be done. Right? For instance, they attack us. They do something to us in our land or in our soil. And then what? We just stand out and buy it and just let us play. But 
But that's a very that's a very sexist comment. Well, no, no. This is I'm just saying from my personal. If you want to say that, it's fine. I got it. But, but that's what men the say. The day, <laughs> that's the exactly the argument men say. But, oh, they're not strong enough. But Last what I checked, about is a thousand years of peace. That Hillary Clinton was a yeah, tougher sure. cookie yeah. than Obama. Yeah. Obama yeah. was a peacemaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hillary, I think, would have suckered that shit and had he yeah. got but on the field and herself I, and go. But she, but she didn't. Benghazi is the main okay. But we don't like know. Thing. We don't yeah. know specifically. A lot of people died because of her. Okay. No. no. We don't you know the same. Stop no. the madness. Okay. I am no. saying. And this is listen. This is a legitimate fact. She okay. had the decision to make. She didn't make it. A lot of people died because of it. Because she didn't do it. This okay. Is the but whole we but she's human, know. though. No. We all make mistakes, no, and we all we don't sometimes know all of the information. Because we're not in the example. government classified. Imagine. However. A catastrophic event where it's okay. a country. But can I say a big responsibility that in person. this scenario, men are in rule. So we're in a war. There is a fight. There is a, how big is your dick versus mine? And now women, of course, have to have prosthetic dicks. Mm -hmm. Every woman in this room has a dick bigger than yours. Because they've been forced to. So we're comparing apples to oranges. I'm speaking of the time when women, pre-Christianity, ruled the land, ruled the world, and how peace was maintained. And now that men have been in power all of these years, the destruction that has occurred. Both are necessary. We come from male and female. We cannot get whole without a balance of both energies. And I do think that that's what we're trying to do. The other day I saw this ad on Facebook or an article on LinkedIn and it said paw, paw paternity leave and that some company is giving people time off for their, their dogs, their pets. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's super cute and if your pet is sick and he's your child, why not? Yeah. But Men, very few companies let men take off six weeks and be with their baby and bond with their baby the way that the mom, the mom gets. That's true. And that is already a society that creates an alliance between mother and child. And I'm not saying it's wrong or right, I'm just giving some examples. Okay, so we can't pinpoint it down to one scenario that's political, that no one has all the facts. We, we can't. That, that's not how you can do research. Those are more opinions. It doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make it wrong. Um, but really what we're trying to strive for is a balance of the masculine and the feminine. Okay? So we're already at a disadvantage when at birth we already have a triangulation. So the other day I had Paola and Jennifer pull me and I was like the, pretending to be the child and asking, what are you offering me? What are you offering me? What I meant by that is the child is there to meet the parent's needs. The child is giving mother, you know, good grades so she doesn't have to stress out, and the mother is giving the father translation when someone calls because if not, he won't close on the sale. So the child, because it's a barter system, oh, I have to give you something, well then you give me something. And this becomes very dysfunctional. And we tend to lean towards the parent that gives us the greater gift, so to speak, or what we deem to be a better quality. Each and every one of your parents have good and bad qualities. Those are your buckets. Good bucket, bad bucket. My father's bad quality was that he yelled. My mother's worst quality was that body image was everything. My father's good bucket was that he was a money maker. He could sell an igloo to an Eskimo. And my mother's good bucket was that she was very elegant and beautiful. And she was smart. In a book way. My dad was a streets savvy way because he had only had a third grade education. So in my tug of war, so give me two people. Just come up. Marsha, you're just Marcia, you're pulling my arm. I'm not doing it. You guys are afraid of me. I don't understand. <laughs> Both of you pull me. Pull, 
pull, like you're breaking the kid. Pull! Pull me! But mom and dad, what do you want from me? What do you want, James? What do you want, daddy? What do you want me to give you, daddy? In what way? Yeah, but it how? Define it. What? More than your mother? Okay, you want me to demonstrate to you that I love you more than mommy? Okay, daddy. In the morning, I'm going to jump in bed and say, Daddy, 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 Daddy. Is that okay? Is that going to make you happy? Deal. Mommy, what do you want? Pull. I don't even know. What do you want from your kid? Come on. Okay, in what way? How do you want it to demonstrate? Pull. Do what I say. Okay, Mommy, will it make you happy if I talk to you more than Daddy? And I get home from school and tell you all the gossip about the boys? Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> mommy, yep. and when I get home, I'm going to call you and tell you all the news about my friends and my boys. Blah, 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 blah. So that's the deal. There is a Bible story that states, yeah, you can, just stay, just stay, wait. There's a Bible story, I always forget which king it is, a King David, where there are two mothers, and they come and they say that the baby is both of theirs. And King says, David, King Solomon says, oh, okay, this is easy to solve. Let's cut the baby in two. <laughs> Obviously, he knew that one was lying. You can't have two mothers. So the real mother said, no, 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 she can have them. Okay. The idea that the real parent or the love is supposed to supersede the desire, the want, we're not that evolved. <laughs> we're just not. This is a tug of war. This is exactly what every single one of us has gone through. And we're trying to please both. So I now have two homework assignments. You get physical attention more than mom in the mornings. I hug and kiss you, maybe bring you breakfast in bed. And you get all the gossip. Okay? So now each person has some need met. What happened to me? Fuck you. Sorry. I'm left with nothing. I'm left serving and serving and serving. So now pull me again. Okay, so Daddy, mm -hmm. what are you going to give me that I'm going to do this for you every day? A nice pink bike that you want. Oh, Daddy, yes, I love that pink bike. And Mommy, what are you going to give me? Lots of hugs and kisses. There you go. Don't worry, Mommy. You give that to you anyway. And now I have an alarm. Material. The material. I now have an alliance with money. Go get that bike. So, okay. so the other day you had an alliance with me because I gave yes, you freedom. Yes, an alliance with freedom. You were, an alliance was with um, Jen. No, no, I went no. with you. No, I know. You said, oh, she offered me freedom. What I'm saying, like how you did with them, is that the same thing? Like, yeah, yeah, it was the same example. This was just more elaborate. Oh. So the one that gives you, and I'm not talking that they give it to you. He happened to use an example. My father had the power. So my allowance, my allowance, my alliance <laughs> became power. And it became the male role. And it became material. So money, power, wealth, having the cash, became my God. If I ally with dad over here and I take the pink bike, I have an alliance with dad. Mom is over here, but what is the God? Money or material, or you better buy me. Yep, because from now on, you better get, because you don't get tired of that pink And it's everybody. not only him. <laughs> yeah. no. It's every friend, boyfriend, husband. Prostitute? Yeah, I think so. That's why we are all prostitutes. Because we have all been bought in the alliance. I'm going to tell you a story. Anyone ever go to Greece? No. No? <laughs> like, no. I would love to. <laughs> Greece, anyone know the capital of Greece? You know it. You uh, just started uh, saying it. Uh, Athens, uh, yes. The capital of Greece is Athens. Do you know how Athens got its name? 
Yeah, Athena, the goddess. Athena. Okay, do you know the whole story? Um, she was. I don't know. Was she like the god of love or something? No. Oh. Athena. Oh, god, yeah. God. Is the god of strategy and wisdom. <coughs> so there was another god named Neptune. We know Neptune, right, from the oceans. Athena is Mars. It's masculine energy, it's strategy, it's wisdom, it's like people in the situation room. It's the male energy. Neptune is female energy. Isn't that interesting that that's the psychology symbol? And he offers spiritual growth and spiritual guidance. So they have a get together with all of the people of Athens to come name the city. And Athena says, I promise you money and olives and riches and cha-ching. And Neptune says, but I promise you spiritual growth and spiritual wisdom and spirituality, wholeness, authentic self. And what did the Greeks pick? They picked Athens. They picked Athena. And so it is ingrained in the Western world, Western philosophy, that money or power or the masculine energy and what it represents, competition, validation, go, 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 is more valuable. In the Eastern traditions, like in India, in China, they got the leftovers and they took Neptune. Their whole traditions are rooted in more of the spiritual, you know, you see people doing Tai Chi in China, and you see everybody's a Buddhist, or you see everybody is meditating. They took that value system. So because we are Westerners, this is why it's important to ask where your client comes from, on your intake, because every single fat thing is part of the story, we can determine where their values or their alliance is going to lie. I had a client who would say to me that she was the favorite of her father because every time he got home, he was the, she was the one that he wanted to sit on the lap. So she knew he was a favorite, and then he would sneak her like a candy bar. So there was an alliance there with dad, food, and being the favorite, being taken care of, and she was the baby. So there's a lot of threads there. There's a thing with food, and this woman is this, you cannot go to this woman's house, and she will feed you. Ironically, not coincidentally, on her chart, she has a moon in Taurus. Taurus moon is the one of food. They bring you food, they bring you tea, they bring you co coffee, they bring... Every time she comes over, let me make you tea. I don't want tea. <laughs> I'm a Taurus. She makes me soup. She brings me this. No, no, Taurus moon. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm bad. <laughs> so it's, it, it, these are learned behaviors. So the alliances that we're making in those tug of wars, when the parents aren't speaking, or they are, like in a divorce setting and the, the kids are with their Disney dad, the kids are going to say, damn, I'd rather not do my homework and stay up late freaking watching Jimmy Neutron than freaking being in bed at 8 o'clock and having to eat broccoli. I mean, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Of course the alliance is going to be with Disney Dad. And so situation after situation, there's going to be mom that's exiled, and for the client, 99% of the times, in a problem that they have, that outcast parent is going to be the one that's the problem maker. In Rebecca's case, the guy that gave her part-time love, which just like her dad, was the problem. And we don't get rid of our problems, besides that we love our problem, <laughs> baby, I love you. We make love to our problems is because if we got rid of our problems, what we're saying is, I'm going to quit trying to become whole. And I'm just going to surrender 
to this piece of shit world and I'm going to stop fighting for becoming wholeness, going back to the cosmos. That's why when someone usually gets sick or has such a difficult time in their life, what do they go to? In jail, in the hospital. What was it? Nothing. No, no. When people are really trying to have a change in their life. Yes, obviously those are poor coping skills that represent God in its own way.